Are you trying to create high-end live streams using virtual callers and in-person events going on all at the same time? This fly pack is completely portable and goes on the road with me so that I can bring in a virtual caller for my live stream. Let's find out how it works. Welcome back to the YouTube channel where I'm talking all about live streaming and today we're going to discuss bringing on a virtual caller with this six rack mount unit right here that's completely portable and something that I can take on the road with me. If you're interested in learning more about live streaming, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe button below. This video is gonna be a little bit of a longer one because I wanna dive a little deeper in depth as to how this works what this is and why I chose to go the hardware route as opposed to maybe a laptop and a couple little like USB HDMI capture devices and things like that. So let's first dive in as to the why for this because obviously this is not cheap and this isn't something that falls in line with the price point of let's say the A10 Mini Pro. This is probably all in all maybe $2,000 in total. So the reason being for one, I'm a huge fan of hardware. I know that there's a ton of software solutions out there. I've seen things like StreamYard and you know, there's a TriCaster that we use for some of our bigger live productions. And that allows us to bring in people using the Skype call connect. We could always bring in a Zoom call and pin people to the second screen. Or if we're using the TC2, then we have the ability to bring in a Zoom call as well. And those are all fine and dandy, but the TriCaster is at the $30,000 end of the price range. And StreamYard is at the, I don't know, I think it's like $30, $40 a month price range. And so I was looking for something that I could use as an in-between that kind of was an all-in-one multi-tool. And I'm really excited to present to you I don't even have a name for it. This is just my six rack mount unit rig. So let's talk about what this does and what it's capable of. So for starters, this allows me to bring a virtual caller into my live stream. Now you might be saying, hey, Zeph, you know, it doesn't make sense that you would use a $2,000 rig. You know, I can use a $300 laptop and just, you know, zoom and full screen somebody and bring them in and we're done, right? Yeah, I totally get that. And you know what, you're right. If you're just trying to bring somebody in on Zoom, then that makes sense. But what happens when you need to, let's say, record an individual feed of that person full screened? Well, you'd have to have an A10 Mini ISO or maybe the new A10 Mini Pro Extreme ISO where you can record each individual feed. And that's great, but what if you want it to also be something that you can live stream out, you know, everything in one go, just take this, not need anything else, right? So like, th this is a multi-tool. This can do so many things all in one. This could become your PowerPoint unit. This could become your Zoom unit. Uh, this could even be a two camera switcher unit. There's a lot of things it can do. So let's explain the build out of this because this is something I had to plan for weeks to figure out how to do it properly, how to cram it all in here and make sure I had everything that I needed. So I'm gonna go from kind of top to bottom here on the front side, and then I'll switch it around, I'll show you the back side. So right now it's open, but this is actually a rack mount case. So it comes with two covers, one for each side. So let me show you those. So these are the case coverings. Uh, they just kind of latch onto the front and the back there. But what I like about this one in particular is that the front cover has a zipper pocket inside of it. So the reason why I wanted a zipper pocket is because in order to run a computer, you need a keyboard and a mouse. And so I've got my handy dandy keyboard that sits right inside of this zipper mesh pocket. And one of the nice things about this keyboard from Logitech is it actually has a touch trackpad and the mouse buttons built into it. And it's completely wireless. It runs on just a couple of AA batteries. And I only have to replace them like every six to 12 months. So it's a perfect little companion to this entire set. So let's go top to bottom here. That was just the outside case that's involved. And just so you know, this one isn't on wheels. It just has a couple of handles, but it's really not all that heavy. So from the top, we've got a Feel World dual monitor. This has two screens on it, but what I like about this is that it has both HDMI input as well as SDI input for either monitor. It also has a loop out. So you've got an HDMI loop out and an SDI loop out. Depending on whatever's plugged into each individual monitor, you can loop that out and send it somewhere else. Moving on down the line, I've got just a little vent that's in place here because everything inside this is going to start heating up 
and this is going to keep a lot of warm air inside and we want to make sure that we can keep the air flowing and keep it cool and on the back of the fan I'll show you that in a second so having that room for the air to flow in and to flow out makes perfect sense here now on the bottom we've got two more Blackmagic devices on one side we have the Blackmagic web presenter and then on the other side we have the Blackmagic HyperDeck Mini so the HyperDeck acts as an SD card recorder but it can also do video playback if you've got it hooked into your switcher and then the uh, web presenter basically allows me to trick the computer that's inside this into believing that there's a webcam plugged in but instead that webcam feed is actually my cameras that I'm sending into it the reason in particular why I have the web presenter is one because it's now a two camera switcher it has one SDI input and one HDMI input take note this is the older model the newer model I believe is only SDI input so just know that and this is limited to 720p as far as the signal it's sending into the computer not a big deal because the whole idea is that this is going to be our return feed that we're sending back to people on the zoom call but in the event that you are doing a live stream and just using this unit as a two camera switcher you've also got a full hd output from this so you could go into your recorder and record a full hd copy and then maybe just stream 720p to wherever your final destination is whether that's uh, facebook or youtube or anywhere else or even zoom so we've used this in a couple scenarios for that but the important thing is that this is what's getting our return feed back into the computer because with the computer being inside I don't have a webcam I don't have anything plugged in to send a feed back to them so they would just see and hear black if I didn't send anything back so that's the front of this on the very bottom I've got uh, just a uh, this is kind of like a surge protector so on the front it has a couple outlets I can plug into and this actually powers up the entire unit so the cable that sticks out the back when I plug that in I just hit the power button that's down here right on the corner there and that will power on everything inside this unit on top of the outlets that are right here there's somewhere in the neighborhood of seven or eight outlets on the back of it that are helping to supply power to everything on the inside, the inner guts of this thing. So let's go ahead and switch this guy around and show you what's going on on the inside here. I'm gonna try to show you as best as I can, but just keep in mind there's a lot of stuff crammed in there, so I'll explain it, and then we'll also go ahead and pop up a uh, screenshot with a diagram on screen so you can see what's what. And uh, I'm just gonna slide this in right here. So on the back, you can see that we have our Mac Mini, and this is the computer that's making it all run. The reason why I chose a Mac Mini is honestly just because I used to work for Apple and I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy. Uh, I really like how powerful they are. This one in particular, I believe, is an eight core processor. And then we upgraded the RAM to 32 gigs of RAM something around a 512 gig solid state drive. At the end of the day, this is not made to hold a lot of stuff. It's really just to make sure it's powerful enough to run things like Zoom, Skype, uh, do some live streaming. Now on the side, you've actually got this little white dongle sticking out. Reason being, we've needed to, let's say we have to access this computer and plug something in USB wise. Because I've gone ahead and taken zip ties and tied this down to the rack that this is sitting on, I don't have a way to access those USBs. I can't just, I didn't want to actually have this with the outlets facing outwards because then we'd have a lot of cable runs from the other things inside of here that were basically sticking out and then it would hit the case and that could ultimately ruin the cables over time. So I did choose to run the cables kind of like through the side here instead. And so this is basically a little adapter so that I can figure out how to, uh, you know, get something plugged in, like let's say a, a PowerPoint clicker, you know, and the, the other side of it, the little receiver is USB. You could plug that in. Maybe I need to load up a flash drive with, uh, you know, a PowerPoint or something on it. Regardless, any way that I need to get into this, I can just use this USB right here. Now that wireless keyboard I showed you earlier is using another adapter, another little like dongle, transmitter, receiver type thing, and that is plugged into the back as well. We've got one HDMI output on this, and so we're leveraging one of the USB-C outputs for our second HDMI output. So that's the computer that's on this side. Now on this side, this is actually a uh, gigabit ethernet switch that also has power over ethernet capabilities. The reason why I chose power over ethernet is because one of the Blackmagic devices can actually be powered by ethernet. So you'll notice we have a couple ethernet cables that are 
running down here right now, one is actually to get internet into the Mac Mini, and then the other one is to power one of the Blackmagic devices down below. It saves us from having to put another cord down here, and you can see it's kind of messy, so it's not as easy to get to. So I wanted to just have one less cord, one less big blocky AC adapter down there. So just below this computer, and note how I did leave a good chunk of space here above the computer for heat to dissipate, but below it is actually a fan. And I believe this fan unit has four tiny fans built in. They're kind of silent when they're running on the lowest speed, but you can definitely tell once it starts to rev up. So just know that this is not something that you wanna have very close to your live streaming subject because the mic's probably gonna pick up a little bit of the fan unit. But I know there are some quieter options. Just know that this isn't, you know, super loud, it's not going to destroy your footage, but this is not something that's whisper quiet. But what I like about this fan unit is it has a thermal sensor that I can place. It's actually somewhere inside there where I believed the warmest part would be, which was kind of roughly below the Mac Mini, but also between the two other Blackmagic units, kind of in the center of where all the heat was going to be. And it can either automatically adjust or I can manually adjust the speed of the fans to keep this thing as cool as possible. And it'll tell me what temperature it is inside. So I can make sure that nothing's overheating and everything's running smoothly there. Now below the fan, I've actually got access to my display. So the dual monitors that are on the Front. I know that you can't quite see it from here, but there's two displays with HDMI input, HDMI loop out, SDI input, and SDI loop out. It's on the back of each display, and I can reach those if I stick my hands in just underneath of this fan uh, all the way to the front of the unit. You can plug stuff in. I try not to move this a whole lot because for obvious reasons, it's not easy to get to. Now on the bottom of this, you can actually see, there we go. So you can actually see, there's our open slot for the air to flow. Um, and then on the rack down here, this is where I've got my Blackmagic web presenter and the Blackmagic hyperdeck. They're sitting on the rack. And then just below that, we've got all of the power cables. So you can see that part itself is a little bit messy, but the good news is that the way I've hooked this up because of that power unit on the bottom is there's actually just one cable that I can pull out and plug in. And then I hit the switch on the front of the unit and the whole thing powers up. So I'm a huge fan of that because that way I don't have to go pulling all this stuff out and plugging it up. So one other thing you might notice down here is actually on the bottom right about there is one of these bi-directional micro converters, the HDMI to SDI converters. So why did I do this? Uh, this was kind of an interesting choice, but I think it worked out really well for me. So think about the fact that there's two displays on here. Right, you've got your you've got your computer displays one and two. Now the problem is with getting this feed into the HyperDeck Mini so that I can record an isolated feed on what's on the second screen, I needed to be able to input SDI. The beauty of the web presenter is it has HDMI and SDI inputs, but the micro or I'm sorry, the HyperDeck it doesn't have a HDMI input, so I need to send it SDI in. So what I did was I took the USB-C to HDMI coming out of our Mac Mini, that's for Display 2, and I ran it into this converter. I then took the HDMI output and left that open to go into my ATEM Mini because this is basically saying, okay, I'm gonna take that second display full screen and feed that into my ATEM Mini. And then I took the SDI output and I sent that into the HyperDeck. Now the good news is because I can reach all the cables in the back, I could change this up, right? So if I wanted to, I could theoretically unplug the HyperDeck and take my program out feed from one of, one of your switchers, whatever you're using, whether it's the A10 Mini Pro or anything like that. And I can run that feed into the HyperDeck. Again, I need to use a converter because it doesn't take an HDMI input, but if I wanted to use this just to record an H.264 version of my live stream, then I totally could. But for the most part, what I'm doing is I'm keeping this to record a full screen version of our virtual guests. So I'll bring a, uh, a Zoom up, a Zoom meeting, and I will go into the preferences and set it to use dual monitors, and that allows me to pin somebody full screen to the second screen. And that's typically how I bring them into my live streams. So this is basically converting that HDMI out of the Mac to SDI so that it can go into my HyperDeck and be recorded, 
then it's feeding the other one into that second screen. And then I've got an HDMI feed that can still go out to the A10 Mini. So this worked out extremely, extremely well for me. Now, let's talk about the web presenter because that's the one thing that we haven't quite addressed here is getting that return feed back into the Zoom so that your guests can see the live feed coming out. You know, if I've got someone here in studio that I want them to see in here, I need to be able to send their feed back in. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. The way I've been doing this in studio is I actually take a feed out from my camera in studio because I'm running audio through my camera. So that will send an audio and a visual feed of my person in person in studio into the web presenter as our return feed. Now this works fantastically because the person on the other end calling in on Zoom can see and hear the person that's here in the studio. That way they can talk, they can interact with each other, but I need to make sure that the person in studio can see and hear the person that's called in virtually. So that's where taking that HDMI feed or even an SDI feed from the splitter that's in the back out to a TV that they can use as a confidence monitor in the studio so that they can see their virtual guests. So they can see them, they can hear them because the sound is coming out over that feed. I can either play it through the TV or if I'm worried about it feeding back uh, into the microphone, I can send it into an IFB earpiece that I have. So basically it'll go to the TV, but we'll split it off. Or if it's just going to a monitor, I'll take the headphone jack output from the monitor and I have a little three and a half millimeter to XLR cable that I can send right into my headphone amplifier. And I'll make another video later on to talk about the IFB because it's a really great tool to have in your kit. But basically this allows me to send that feed to the person in the studio. I can also send the feed to the person virtually so they can see, they can hear, they can talk to each other, they can interact. And this has been a great way for us to live stream in the studio because we wanna have kind of that mix of virtual and in person. So we already put off to the side this notion of using a software solution, some of the cheaper options out there, like you've seen probably StreamYard and I'm not gonna knock them, like they do fantastically and I think it's a really cool tool to have. But for me, I like having a piece of hardware because I know it's a little bit more reliable and because I've got you know support that I can reach out to for any number of things. Like the Mac has really great support, everything else being black magic, they've got good support. Uh, the Fuel World monitor, I now have a person who sold me some Fuel World products so I can reach out to him. And there's a community online of a lot of people using these products. So that's why I like this. I don't wanna go after the shiny new object on the scene that's making that happen. But the other thing that I wanted to talk about and the magic that happens with the web presenter was being able to send that return feed, right? Because whoever calls into this on Zoom needs to see and hear the person on the other side, right? So the web presenter, what's special about this is, and I'm going to note that this is the older model, the 720p model, the newer model acts a little bit differently, but this older model has an XLR input, which means I can inject audio independently of the video feed that's going into the web presenter. So that means that I could take my, maybe my program feed, my HDMI out from my Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, and I could send it into the web presenter. But the problem with that is if I'm sending all of that audio, that means that the person calling in on Zoom, their feed going into the switcher, the switcher feed going out over program, they're gonna hear themselves at like a half second delay and it's gonna be awful because they're not going to be able to speak right. They're gonna hear themselves at such a small delay. It really throws people off. There's actually an app out there I tried one time where it, it totally scrambles your brain, okay? So I recommend not sending them their audio feed back. But with this XLR input, I can now inject audio, meaning I can take all the audio of the people in my studio into say a sound mixer I like in particular the Zoom Live Track L8, and I take that audio feed and I can send that into the XLR of the web presenter and back out to our Zoom person. So as you can see here, this is a really compact setup that serves a bunch of different purposes. I really love this unit. I think that it's going to be a huge tool for me moving forward. 
Yes, will I be exploring other things like StreamYard and, and software and browser-based applications? Absolutely, because I would love to find something that replaces this for 30, 40 bucks a month or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, just knowing that I can put this rack unit that's in a tough case uh, in the car, be ready to go and bring this to any event and not have to worry about anything, um, I think that really makes me feel so much better about what I'm doing. And I just feel like it's going to be more reliable for the long run. So this has been a, a long overview of this unit. This is my virtual call-in unit that I use for my A10 Mini Pro, but I love it and it's worked extremely well for me. I think that this could be a great opportunity for you as well. So I'm gonna make sure that we link below to any of the items that were used in this. I know that there's going to be a lot of stuff down there. And then if you have any questions, I encourage you, please leave questions on this video. I would love to answer your questions about this. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm going to try my best to, uh, to help you create something like this as well. And as technology grows, I think we'll definitely be able to get this into a much smaller package. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you stayed for this long and uh, you're willing to listen to me ramble on for a little bit. And we'll see you in our next video.